Welcome to Exposure. This is the show where we showcase local films with local filmmakers. I'm your host, Steve Rodajev, and we're here today with Derek Jones. Uh, you actually go by D. Jones, is that correct? Yes, yeah. Uh, why is that? Is that just a, a stage name? or? Well, uh, you know, one, one of my uh, friends from, from college uh, started calling me D. Jones uh, a long time ago, and it just kind of stuck. Also, just sounded nice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was easy to spell. My name's Derek, and it often gets misspelled. And so it's the D. Jones is easy to spell. People can people people can say it easily. So that's that's what I've been going by, and that's what I've been known by for a long time. Very nice. So how did you get your start? Uh, just tell us a little bit about your background. What really inspired you to uh, get your start in filmmaking? Uh, okay, well, I was born and raised in Youngstown, Ohio. Growing up, we didn't have a lot. You know, we had uh, our imagination a lot. <laughs> Me and my brother, we got into making movies. We called them movies. We didn't have video cameras, but we did, uh, we did basically plays, live shows. Okay. Um, we'd do sequels to movies. So, you know, now coming Friday the 13th, part 17, and, <laughs> you know, we do all kind yeah. of different things. And so we made these movies uh, basically as live action films and performed them for family. And I really got interested in that. Uh, got interested in the background of theater as well. And uh, that kind of morphed into doing film projects with friends, you know, we'd have our camcorders and uh, it just kind of kind of stuck with me as something that I was really passionate about. And so coming up, I really wanted to get involved in the filmmaking process. 631, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you were speaking about Youngstown. That was actually shot in Youngstown. What's it all about? So uh, 631 is a, uh, is a personal documentary film and 631 refers to my address growing up. Uh, I grew up in a house on 631 Ridge Avenue in Youngstown, Ohio. Um, it was a house that my mother had also grown up in, uh, my grandparents had bought. And so uh, the house always had a lot of history to it. Uh, it had a lot of memories, of course. Uh, typically, in my experience with a lot of friends and things like that in the Youngstown area, people were moving around a lot, renting houses, things like that. It was very uh, unique for us in our circle to be um, homeowners in that regard. It was just a special place. It was also a place that reminded us about how poor we were. Uh, you know, houses need upkeep. Uh, they, need, um, they need care. And a lot of times we didn't have the money to put into the place. And so uh, over time, uh, as the film shows, it became a place that we couldn't live in anymore. And by the time I was making the film, uh, we no longer lived there. We still own the house, but we no longer uh, uh, lived in it and it was falling apart. And it seemed quite clear that unless something was done soon, it was going to, just like many of the other houses in Youngstown, disappear. And so when I got the opportunity to do this film project in my personal documentary class, I decided that I wanted to do something that was basically for me and my family to be therapeutic, to, to, to memorialize this house that had lived through four generations of family and, uh, and, and make something of it, of the experience to show that we were there. Is that kind of frightening to open yourself up and being kind of vulnerable? What's that like? You know, I come from a, a, a family and a culture that's not very open, you know, about uh, especially when, it, when there's problems or, you know, things that you're struggling with. And so, you know, I was the friend who didn't have very many friends over my house because my circle of theater friends all lived in the suburbs and they had these nice houses. And I kind of lived in the, you know, a little rougher part of town and those types of things. So it was always kind of this interior thing, this very private thing. And even when I made the film, for the most part, it was still a private thing. It was about my family, it involved my family. Um, it was very difficult uh, to open up because once you open up as an artist uh, and expose yourself, um, you're then open to the interpretation of others um, and sometimes even the judgment of others. And so when you're working with something very personal uh, that, that involves me and the story of me and my family and things like that, it's even more difficult sometimes to, to really open up. But I think that for the sake of the art, is an important thing to do. And then it, by doing so, it also helps me to realize that, you know, our story is a common story. It's not a, it's not a, right. you know, though it's unique because it's ours, it's also very common because a lot of people can relate. Let's take a look at 631. Back in the late 50s, early 60s, we were considered pretty well to do. My mother had a brand new Cadillac and a mink coat and I was only child. And we had a pretty nice house. And they always had dinner parties. 
my father had finished our basement, so we had a full bar. I can remember being little and my parents entertaining all their uh, friends down the bar, and they would let me stay up, and I'd be like a little hostess. My mother and father divorced in 71, so it was just me and her, and he uh, moved out and got remarried. That was kind of a low point in our lives because then my mother had to go to work. And she started doing domestic work. Again, something that she had did years ago back in the 40s. We were on welfare. We, we stayed at the house. I graduated from high school, got married, had Derek, not necessarily in that order. Late 70s, early 80s, you know, you could rent an apartment for $200 a month. I mean, we, we had a couple places where we stayed. My mother was down on Ridge in that big house by herself. I don't even really remember how it happened. I just remember one day my mother calling me and telling me, well, I put the house in your name and I'm starting to look for an apartment. I was pregnant with my second child. I was a homeowner at um, like 21. We grew up hearing the stories, you know, so, I mean, immediately it was bigger than us. It was the same family, same house, same furniture. 